Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norville. This edition's top stories. The governor of the ECCB lays out an action plan for ECCU members amid COVID-19. Invest St. Lucia to partner with government on assisting the recovery of the business sector. And St. Lucia among countries to receive PPE and medical supplies from the U.S. government. Member countries of the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union, ECCU, are faced with unprecedented economic challenges with the advent of COVID-19. Governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, Timothy Antoine, has indicated that a sharp contraction of between 10 and 20 percent is expected throughout the ECCU for 2020. Highlighting four key action plans, the governor noted that necessary steps must be taken as the world seeks to coexist with the virus. The key action plans include following health protocols, expanding connectivity, adopting a mindset of growth, and managing finances wisely. The pandemic, according to the governor, has presented several opportunities that can be seized if approached with a growth mindset. To cope, we need a growth mindset. One of the most important qualities of a growth mindset is that it learns from problems and reframes problems into opportunities. A growth mindset reframes problems into opportunities. The reality is that this adversity presents opportunities. And so I'm heartened by the early evidence of some businesses that have basically revamped or tweaked their business models to include delivery of certain services, and I think that's important. And I will make the point again, going forward, health and safety will be key to all and any business, large or small, health and safety. Hotels, small business, bars, shops, supermarkets, any business, and of course workplaces as well. With no idea when the pandemic will be over, Governor Antoine explained that the proper management of one's finances is critical. He highlighted steps that should be taken, including identifying essential and non-essential spending and utilizing available financial relief. For example, the banks and credit unions are offering loan deferral, a moratorium. The utility companies, Social Security, the government, you need that support avail yourself at this point. That will also help. Our churches, others, avail yourself. But I also want to challenge us to save something from what little we receive. If you are receiving $500 per month, try and save $50. It might seem like a, a big ask because you think you want to do a lot of things, but I hope the last month has taught us that not everything is essential. ECCB Governor Timothy Antoine and the ECCB Governor's advice to adopt a growth mindset has already been embraced by the government of St. Lucia with a key agency positioning itself to guide prospects for the island's growth. Invest St. Lucia anticipating a highly competitive environment post-COVID-19 says it is imperative that the island does all it can to stand above the competition. Alana Lantico Bryce is the Investment Services Manager is going to be facilitation to make sure those projects come through the pipeline quickly, they can start construction, and then it's also going to be a focus like every other country in the world on ICT and the digital economy because this pandemic has brought things to light that we probably knew already but weren't actioning um, quite as ferociously as we should, but now there is a need to accelerate that even further. So. ICT investments um, and working on investments or partnerships that will enhance the skills of our workforce. That's something we hear a lot about lo locally and internationally because businesses want a location that can provide a solution to, to their needs. Um, so skills training, that is going to be um, important. And then we're going to have to look at how we can transform St. Lucia, not just as a tourism service economy, but a Gen generally as a business services economy, non-tourism. Invest St. Lucia is also providing assistance with the recovery of the local business sector. 
fact, we are working with the government, primarily the Ministry of Commerce, in putting together a stimulus package that businesses could tap into post-COVID. Um, and then we have also already made overtures to training institutions um, that we could look to partner with to help with the improvement of the skills so that St. Lucia can be a destination where we export um, more of our services to the international market. Investment Services Manager at Invest St. Lucia, Alana Lantico Bryce. The Ministry of Agriculture is closely monitoring how the agriculture sector is faring amid COVID-19. As we hear from Anicia Antoine, the pandemic is not the only threat to the viability of the sector. The ongoing coronavirus pandemic has caused severe disruptions to St. Lucia's agriculture sector. The agricultural industry has been highly dependent on the demand of goods by the tourism industry and the international market. The Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, explained that one of the main concerns of the government during the pandemic is the overproduction of crops if correct measures are not taken. What's happening right now, um, we, you're going around the market and see there's, a, there's the, the um, vendors selling at reduced prices because they have to get rid of the produce because I mean agriculture produce do not stay, they have a very short shelf life. You go and you, 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 you manufacture a chair and the chair can stay, you manufacture a bottle of wine, it can stay, but when it comes to agricultural produce, if you don't go into the question of value added and agro-processing, it has a very short shelf life. So what is happening now, in, in an attempt for the farmers to recoup some of the investment, um, they have to sell at reduced prices, sometimes below cost of production. So that is the problem we have right now, and that's the concern we have as a ministry. Because if you have persons selling at below cost of production, how do they have money to reinvest right, and to continue when things are, have leveled up? The Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources and Cooperatives explained that with the current depletion of St. Lucia's raw water supply, measures are currently being put in place to mitigate the use of water by farmers. Agriculture is critical and what is critical for, for farmers to continue with livestock or, or crops. Um, I do not see we, if we agree to discontinue farmers using water for the livestock, but when it comes to crops now, then it's something that we have to look at um, in a very serious way. Um, we have not taken a decision as to the respective um, economic activities that will be so affected. Um, we have discussed when we met with the stakeholders last week um, to look at what are the options. We, we discussed the whole aspect of agriculture and how it's going to affect agriculture. Um, we also look at the time frame and we're looking at to start the state of, state of emergency um, on Monday the 18th. But like I said, I left cabinet to come here. Um, we have not started that discussion, but it's something we will be discussing today. Whether we start on the 18th um, and the entities that will be affected as it put into the state of emergency. The Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources and Cooperatives reaffirmed the government's commitment to creating a facilitating and enabling environment for farmers during this time. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. The Ministry of Health continues to increase the number of tests for COVID-19 conducted in the community. Thus far, more than 700 tests have been conducted. This comes as the island registered a 100% recovery rate for a second time. Dr. Sharon Belmar George is a Chief Medical Officer. As of May 13, 2020, St. Lucia has recorded a total of 18 confirmed cases of COVID-19. The last case has now recovered and been discharged from the hospital. All 18 cases are therefore fully recovered. The Ministry of Health have received results for 52 samples and they were all negative. These samples were mainly captured through the community respiratory clinics. This brings a total number of tests conducted to date to 727. Although we are pleased to maintain a low transmission level of COVID-19 in country, we remind the public that we are still at risk and must remain vigilant as the threat continues. The CMO encouraged the public to maintain protocols even when in a familiar surrounding such as the community. We recognize the efforts of a wide cross-section of the population in adopting the recommended infection prevention and control measures and taking the necessary precautions when having to venture out in public. 
We would like to see these measures adopted at the community level as well. We call on all community leaders, gatekeepers, and heads of organizations to support the Ministry of Health in the implementation of these measures. We continue to request that every individual practices standard recommendations to prevent the spread of infection. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belma George. In response to the high demand for personal protective equipment, PPE, and other medical supplies due to COVID-19, the United States has donated more than U.S. $104,000 worth of PPE and other medical supplies for seven Eastern Caribbean countries. St. Lucia, Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, Dominica, Grenada, St. Kitts and Nevis, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The supplies which were acquired through a supplier in Trinidad and Tobago include 1,000 surgical masks, 500 face shields, 250 protective goggles, 1,200 latex gloves, 1,000 shoe covers, 10 gallons of hand sanitizer, and 87 hazmat suits. These will be packaged for each country and issued to the national disaster offices for national level distribution, targeting those who are on the front line and are highly exposed, including essential services personnel and security forces. And this is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. COVID-19 is a new pandemic disease as declared by the World Health Organization. It is transmitted directly by respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs or sneezes, or indirectly through rubbing the face with contaminated hands. There is still no specific treatment or vaccine against COVID-19, and as such, the farming community should adhere to some special recommendations. Reduce your farm labor to only essential workers. Ensure regular hand washing with soap and water or use 60% to 95% alcohol-based hand sanitizer until soap and water are available. Clean all work surfaces and farm tools such as cutlasses, forks and sprayers with a 10% bleach solution. Ensure that toilets are cleaned thoroughly after each use and sanitize daily. Prohibit visitors to the farms. Limit contact among farm workers and promote social distances ensuring six feet between each worker and promote a no handshaking or unnecessary touch policy. More than ever before, your important role as the gatekeepers of St. Lucia's nutritional health and food security should be taken seriously. When you exercise these precautions, you not only safeguard your health, but also continue to allow all St. Lucians access to freshly grown fruits, vegetables, and other local crops. Remember, it is our responsibility to ensure our nation eats fresh, St. Lucia's best. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle a Quayol. Merci au temps, Général. Merci, Madame Department, qui est responsable pour les formations au gouvernement cette ci Ça, c'est GIS, car pour cette nouvelle à Quayol. Pour cette Primus Hutchinson. Organisation qui est responsable pour acheter figs cette ci pour vendre à l'autre pays, ça, c'est Winfresh. Kaini pour expérimenter un changement à façon qui a opéré. Ça c'est l'opinion du ministre de l'Agriculture, à cette ici, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph. Dans une discussion récemment à ce NTN, le ministre de l'Agriculture a déclaré que le gouvernement n'a pas continué à dépenser l'argent à son organisation. Récemment, le gouvernement a fait une fraîche avec 1 million de dollars pour aider à payer les cultivateurs de figues qui ont été adoués. Le ministre agricole a déclaré que Magui Winfresh a plusieurs millions de dollars à propriété et que l'autre sac est valable. Il n'y a pas de l'argent content en confort. Nous ne pouvons pas continuer à acheter l'argent pour payer des dettes. Une organisation qui nous a dit que nous avons acheté l'argent. Quatre 
tous les autres shareholders, CVC, Dominic et puis la Guinade, right? um, nous faisons parce que c'est fameux, nous, tous seulement qui qui affecté en vision sur nous café. Mais nous pas à côté de café tout, tout l'heure, so, nous ne pouvons pas restructurer Winfresh. Et puis, nous avons dit que, grâce à la leadership du Premier ministre Alain Chastney, um, il a parlé du Premier ministre Gonzalez, et puis le Premier ministre Gonzalez a parlé du Premier ministre Dominic. Et puis, vendredi, nous avons eu un meeting par uh, Zoom pour discuter de Winfresh, pour demander nous avons restructuré Winfresh. On a Ezekiel Joseph, vous remarquez aussi le gouvernement Jama de Winfresh pour présenter un, et puis un plan à ce moment-là au passé au cas aller au vent. Selon le ministre Joseph, le premier ministre honorable Alain Chasney et le cabinet, j'ai d'accord que si le gouvernement n'est pas satisfait et puis plan ça là pour le cas pour faire un gamme et puis Winfresh, bien souvent. Et puis le Mossad, nous avons l'autre option, et puis ils savent ça. Le management, ah. Winfresh, ça, nous avons l'autre option. Parce que nous avons l'autre option, parce que nous avons l'autre management structure qui est par rapport à nos supports. Le Premier ministre et moi, nous ne sommes pas d'accord avec ça. Le Premier ministre nous a dit qu'il y a une fèche à l'édor, mais il a dit non, parce que nous avons toute l'infrastructure en Angleterre pour pour ripen banners on nous cherche investment dans l'Angleterre pour moi nous passer à couvrir qui des windfresh ça nous fait c'est restructure windfresh si vous cherchez management cherchez management plus vite qui plus vite ou quoi ça peut faire well vous allez dire semaine ça j'ai dit vous allez dire semaine ça nous quoi ça avec bis à sous ou à part nous quoi une forme management nous avons des ça quoi small committee ça committee ni representative from service ni representative from service ici pour vie live windfresh pour vie ça y a une projection de la et puis pour dire nous si ça a commis à quoi, si c'est bon. Le rapport du ministère de la Santé a montré que depuis le 13 à mois de mai 2020, c'est aussi enregistré 18 cas de maladie corona. Le rapport du ministère a montré aussi le dernier cas déjà sorti à l'hôpital et tout 18 cas de cas là, ça a trouvé des Le ministère de la Santé a reçu 55 résultats à tout avec toutes sortes de négatifs. Le ministère a été conduit, c'était ça là, à ces cliniques, à ces différents communes dans le pays. Pour le présent, 727 tests j'ai fait à le pays. Mais malgré la euh, maladie qui tou, euh, bat toujours, le ministère a fait un appel pour le public là, prendre toute précaution qui est nécessaire. Parce que nous en risque toujours, le public là, ni pour, pour tuer Koyo, euh, protéger Koyo contre la maladie. Ça là. Le ministère de la Santé a fait public la comprendre aussi qu'on peut a fait préparation pour vivre au pour normalement petit à petit. Il y a une pour continuer pour suivre ces règles qui sont en place. Le ministère a aussi observé la population qui a suivi ces règles qui euh, sont plus sérieuses à présent. Alors il y a fait un appel pour ces différents chefs en ces communes, chefs d'organisation et l'autre monde pour supporter le ministère de la Santé pour savoir que tout le monde a implémenté ces règles là pour contre la maladie de Corona. Ouais, ça là, appel là, car aller pour public là, continuer à suivre pour laver la main et puis savoir avec l'eau, service sanitaire, avec masse à souffrir jaillot, chaîne six pieds de distance au dion à l'autre et aller visiter docteur sur pas qu'à santé qu'on bien. Ministre de santé, comment des publics là aussi pour veiller pour l'autre maladie qu'on zika, dengue, chikungunya, parce que ça c'est saison. Côté, il a commencé à lever tête encore. Le secteur business PIA a continué pour assister à la bataille contre la maladie de Corona. Le dernier pour faire ça, c'est la compagnie Robis qui a vendu le euh, gaz pour ni tuer manger et aussi pour l'auto-service. J'ai vu pour la compagnie Robis, avec Gary Gustav, avec Gary Gustav, déclaré que la compagnie a très plein pour sa présentation. Ça là pour le chef officier médical euh, ci pour aider les travailleurs de santé et les gens qui sont malades, avec l'autre maladie COVID-19 qui connaît plus avec le corona. Selon Gustave, euh, attention, c'est pour que euh, tout le monde qui trouve protection contre la maladie de la et que c'est pour ceux qui ont fait service à la Oliwon, oui, je crois, pour aider la bataille contre le corona. Le ministre de la Santé, on a Mary Isaac, félicité euh, l'homme, l'honnêteté, la compagnie Robis, pour présentation salaire et dit que ces équipements de protection salaire qui aident le ministère de la Santé à la pile manière pour abattre la maladie de Corona. Il a ajouté que ces officiers de la Santé ont fait tellement un bon travail 
accès équipement ça là qui aidé pour plus toujours pour continuer aider un euh, pays à continuer situation bataille là contre Covid-19. Le bus présenté 2000 mars pour service de l'opération et 2000 pour l'autre monde servi et 2500 gars. Et c'est comme ça nous retrouvons votre nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Je vous remercie pour vous recevoir la vie. Je vous remercie pour votre nouvelle à quoi vous avez présenté. Je vous remercie pour votre journal. Merci à Pearl Primus. Et ça nous amène à la fin de NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.